Hi, this is Emily Azlanian with TV Insider, and I am sitting here with The Walking Dead's Ross Marquand, Josh McDermott, Kelly Fleming, and Seth Gilliam. How are you guys doing? Great. We're doing awesome. Great. How are you? Yes. Good, good. So we're going to talk about the season 10 premiere. We've all seen it, and a lot of things happen. Um, I wanted to start, one of my favorite parts of the premiere was a conversation that Aaron had with Michonne. And it was about, it was early on, it was whether or not they're the good guys. So I just wanted to know, do you guys think, and do you specifically, Ross, do you think that they are the good guys? Like, is there a chance that they might not be? Um, I think in this storyline, they are very much the good guys. But, you know, it's we were just talking about Shane a second ago. And a lot of the things that Shane was doing in season one and two, um, you know, Rick was very much against. Yeah. We, get, we can't do that. We'll lose our humanity. And I would argue that Rick did way worse <laughs> yeah. from like seasons four on, yeah. you know, Lots and a uh, lot of bad things. So I think there's a lot of validity to that to that thought process of, you know, are you the villain of someone's story? Maybe fine. But, you know, I think in this instance, the whispers are just bloodthirsty psychos. I mean, there's no yeah. there's no goodness in them. So I think in this in this storyline, I don't agree with Aaron's questioning, I think that they are very much the good guys and, and the whispers are the bad guys if they want to boil it down to such by, by, by a polar, uh, you know. Black and white. Black and white, yeah, yeah. narrative. So, yeah. I mean, but it's also interesting, like, we don't know much about the whispers. Right. right? We don't know what's making them tick, or at least our, our heroes don't know. And so, you know, it's, it's right for him to question and say, are we the bad guys? Because he just, but they are, like, if you really take a step back and think about it, it's like, these are people that are skinning walkers, wearing their skin, yeah. walking around, like, killing people. It's like, I don't know how you justify that. That's not, you know, I think so much of our world is, like, lives in a gray area. That's definitely not in the gray. I mean, yeah. it's just what it is. So I think he's right to question it, but I, I agree with your assessment of it. Um, I did want to talk about the love quadrangle. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is going on since we have two of the four members of that weird dysfunctional family mm -hmm. on the couch right now. Um, so particularly, Seth, we've seen Eugene, sorry. <laughs> we've seen Eugene do his charts. We've seen Sadiq do feeding. Rosita is working off her baby weight. How does he fit in? How does Gabriel fit into all of this? Um. Well, I think that um, I, I think Father Gabriel, I, you know, he has an extended family now and um, and he, he's trying his best to be supportive of each member of that family and whatever they may need. So, you know, I'm sure he's there to, t you know, if Eugene needs to tap out while measuring something, <laughs> then I'm sure Father Gabriel will step in with the yard stick. Or if Sadiq needs to tap out while, you know, doing some midnight feeding, I'm sure Gabriel will be there with the bottle. You know, in whatever ways he's needed. But I think of, of most uh, comfort and support, I think he's there for Rosita above and, and beyond the rest. And, you know, he just takes them, the rest of them, as they, as they come kind of like brothers in some strange way. Yeah. It's very, very patient. Very patient. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Josh, we did see the group kind of, they kind of took to the chart. They looked at it briefly. Do you think that he's going to continue to make the charts and the measurements and all this stuff, or is he kind of kind of cut? I mean, I think that's pushed to aside because of that. I think that's who he is, and I think that we even saw a moment in in that little montage. Um, he was kind of, you know, running over to Rosita to say like, "You're changing the diaper too early." Yeah. Like she's on a timer, and uh, and we saw the consequences of changing too early. Because I mean, it it was just nasty, um, but. You know, I, I don't know that, um, well, I guess it doesn't really make sense, does it? If he's changing too early, then she wouldn't have pooped her diaper. Yeah, you were confused by that. <laughs> this show's not believable. <laughs> um, no, I, d I definitely don't think he's going to get pushed aside. I mean, I think I think there's, there's some, like, eye rolling of, like, uh, okay, Eugene's going to be Eugene. Right. But, like, he's definitely helpful in, in the charts. And, yeah, I mean, you know, if you got to know that stuff. Yeah, if you want to if you want to take a dive into it, like it'll be helpful, but at the same time, like how many people raise kids without that? They're going to do just fine. Yeah. So, I think they love Eugene. I think they um are kind of okay with him being Uncle Eugene. It's the fact that Eugene wants to be Daddy Eugene. Yeah. You know, and uh that's what they probably have a problem with. So, once it once it start they s start going that way, they might push him aside a bit. Okay. <laughs> um my f 
second favorite part of the season 10 premiere was the battle scene. That first five minutes, mm. the training, and all of the like carefulness that those shots took. We're going to see a lot more spears and shields as they move away from guns and that kind of battle, as we've heard. What is the hardest part of that for you guys? I mean, you're pretty much all involved in the fighting. I mean, except maybe Gabriel? Uh, yeah, probably Gabriel is... He stays behind. Stays behind. He's got to watch Baby Coco. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think th we, we, we had a hard time with the heat. I mean, we were out yeah. there for four days straight, and it was... <laughs> 99 yeah. degrees with 100% humidity right next to an ocean. And, and a lot of people. I, I mean, like, yeah. Walking and, information. <laughs> and truly, like, we, we can we can uh, say that was difficult, but the crew worked way harder than us. So, I agree. The hardest part was the filming. It was hot. It was very, very hot. Uh, but it turned out really good. We worked really hard on it. How long were we there? A few days. Four days. Four days in wow. the heat, but we looked it up. I think it was like the heat index was like 110. Mm. But it was it was worth it. But it looks really it's definitely cool. worth it. It, it looks, looks so cool. awesome. Yeah. yeah, and it was really definitely worth it. And that is the way to kick off the season. And you got the first me. shot in too. I got the first kill. <laughs> first kill of the season, right yes. here. <laughs> Kaylee Fleming is yes. Judith. <laughs> um, and there's. A really exciting announcement that happened earlier today. There's Lauren two. Cohan is coming back. <laughs> Can we talk about that at all? That's like, did you guys it's even know when she walked on stage? Yeah. Uh, she was sitting in this Jason mask from right. Friday the 13th, and she was staring. I thought this this person was just staring at <laughs> Seth and I, the whole panel, and I was like, this is creepy. I don't. <laughs> I had no idea who she was, or you know, it was just it was just bizarre. And then all of a sudden, when uh, Chris said, "Hey, oh, that's a great cosplay. Why don't you come up on stage?" I was like, right. "Are you sure?" Because <laughs> this person's been <laughs> dead eyeing <laughs> us the entire panel. Yeah. And then she took off. The, we're like, "Oh my gosh, that's amazing." Yeah. I, they had a, an inkling, I guess, that she was going to be there, but I had no idea. So that's funny. Uh, yeah, she told me she was coming, but I had even I forgot that she, I didn't know <laughs> how she was going to come <laughs> onto the stage. And it was the same thing Ross was saying. She's just staring at us from the crowd, and I was like. We had to go through metal detectors. We had, you know, bomb set the bomb sniffing dogs and all this stuff. <laughs> and they're just, just letting this right crazy out. person on stage. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, we're really excited to have her back. I mean, um, you know, to not have her for most of last season. I mean, I feel like there was a kind of a Maggie shaped hole in yeah. in the cast and the story. And so it's uh, it's very exciting to get her back. She's a tremendous friend and a tremendous actress and. You know, I'm I'm excited for the stories we get to tell uh, with Maggie Green. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Maggie Ree. Ree. Yeah. I did not mean to say Maggie Green. She is married. Yes, she's a married woman. Uh, <laughs> she was married. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys Darn so much on that patient. downer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to watch the rest of season ten and see what happens with whispers and the battle scenes and all this crazy stuff. <coughs> Ross's. Your arm is crazy. Aaron's like new hand is nuts. Um, there's so many exciting things coming this season. I can't wait to see them. I'm sure viewers are gonna love it. Thank you guys so much for coming by. Thank, Thank you. you for having uh, us. You can watch The Walking Dead on AMC Sunday nights at nine. Central. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. yeah.